If you don't know about this guy, Mr. Sunny Vidu, you've probably not been to the controversial side of YouTube. And I highly recommend you not going there because it's gonna be a bit addictive. But do you know what's more interesting about these channels and about these videos? They easily get millions of views no matter whatever duration the videos have. And it all comes down to storytelling and editing. And yes, we are gonna edit a super cool intro from Sunny V2 inside of Damage Resolve. The asset file used for this video will be down in the description. And if you want to take a closer look at what I've done and save all this time, then you can check the project link which will also be there in the description. So without wasting any time, let's get right into our video. The timeline resolution is 9020x1080 with the frame rate at 24fps. The first thing to do is to drag and drop an adjustment layer and extend its length to this much. Then we can go to our fusion page and get started with the video. We are going to be working on a 3D scene and in order to create a 3D scene, we need these following nodes. First of all, a Merge 3D node, then a Render 3D, followed by an Image Plane 3D and a Camera 3D node. Connect them all like this and select the Camera 3D node and change the C value under Translation to plus 3. This right here is important because all these nodes will be at 0, 0, 0 axis. And at this point, nothing we do on the screen will be visible. So after setting up the Camera value, let's add a Merge 3D node to connect the Image Plane 3D. Now later in the video, I'll be adding few more Merge 3D nodes. And it is to control all these nodes at the same time. Even though it's possible to control them all within the image plane 3D section, it's gonna take a lot of time to do it and it's always better to do this this way. Alright, now the first step would be to add the red background border for our video. And after that, we are gonna add our video file and tweak some values. So in order to add a red background border, we need to connect a background node to the image plane 3D. And then we have to control it with a rectangle which acts as a mask. The background color will be this dark red color. You can get the same values by copying this HTML code right here. Then after that, select the rectangle, uncheck the sold option, change the border width to 0.016, width will be 0.9 and height will be 0.914. And finally, the corner radius will be 0.054. And with that, our border is ready. The next step would be to add our video footage and I have this clip which I have trimmed from a Jake Paul video. I'm gonna add it to the stream with the help of a merge node and set the merge size to 0.888. Then set the operator mode to under so that the video footage will go behind the red border. Then I'm gonna add a color corrector node and bring down the saturation all the way down to 0. The contrast will be 1.35 and lift will be 0.11. And also don't forget to go to this option and select this pre-divide and post multiply option so that this color correction will only get applied to this video and won't affect any other nodes. And with that our video is ready. Now just for giving it a little bit of life, I'm gonna add this shiny wipe effect. And creating something like that is actually simple. Just add a brightness and contrast node and inside of it set the gain to 1.4 and lift to 0.08. Again tick this pre-divide and post multiply options down here. Then let's add a rectangular node and instead of this node change the soft edge to 0.0526. Width will be 1 and height will be 0.041 and angle will be at 45 degrees. In order to animate this make sure you enable the show control option which you can check by clicking on this 3 dot button. After that open the secondary window by clicking on this button. Now drag and drop the brightness and contrast node to the left side window to preview what's happening on our screen. Then on frame number 0, let's grab the control points and take it all the way up to this top left hand corner. Then add a keyframe on center X and Y. Then on frame number 150, bring the control points to the opposite corner like this. Then on the very next frame, add a keyframe on center X and Y and bring the control points again to this top left hand corner. Then open the spline window and turn on these rectangular node curves. Zoom to fit it by clicking on this button, then select all these points and click on this set loop option which will play the animation continuously till the end of the timeline's length. And after doing that, this will be our preview. The very final step is to add this drop shadow on our rectangular border to give it a bit of depth. And for that drag and drop our drop shadow node over here, increase the shadow strength to 0.681, drop distance to 0.004 and blur to 0.1799. After that, I am tweaking these image plane 3D settings where translation X will be minus 1.591, Y will be 0.38 and C will be minus 4.37. And this position over here will be where the very first video will be staying. And with that, our element 1 is ready. Now we could add these 10 videos and just burn our GPU or you can work on this one for now and fix its position. Because all these videos have the same border, same wipe effect and same drop shadow. 
The only change it will have is the distance between each other. So an easy trick would be to copy all these nodes from the image plane 3D all the way to the rectangular node and paste it down here like this. And then connect it to the most 3D node. Now disable the media node because the video file is gonna give us a lot of GPU load. But as we are having this red border, we can easily understand what the things are happening. Now move it to the side with the help of an image plane 3D's translation X value. And we have to create three more of this to have this first row of videos. For a better view, we can also turn the camera to the X direction so that we will have more room to preview this animation. Also increase the C value to zoom out our camera. And after taking all these X values, we will have something like this on our screen. Now we need to copy all these nodes along with the most ready to complete our 10 elements. Then create a new Merge 3D node and connect the other two Merge 3D node to it so that the Merge 3D will control all these nodes at the same time. So these two Merge 3D nodes will control the five elements which are associated with it. But the newer Merge 3D node which we added will control all these 10 elements at the same time. But right now the five elements which we copied are just sitting there and we have to position them accordingly. So in order to do that, let's go to the Merge 3 node which will only control the bottom 5 elements. And here, let's change the translation x value to minus 2.271 and translation y to minus 0.687. Now, if you check our camera 3D, we can see that our very first Jake Paul video is sitting right above the Joe Rogan video. Oops, actually, this video is supposed to be Joe Rogan, so let's fix that. And for that, let's disable the video on the 6th node and add our Joe Rogan video on the 10th one. And with that, the location of our start point animation is ready. Now we need to move our camera 3D node and start adding our tilted camera animation. Now let's use an easy trick to smoothen our workflow. The first method will be to go towards the playback option, then hover the mouse over to this timeline proxy resolution and change this to quarter. The second would be to move these unnecessary nodes somewhere else. For that, copy all these nodes from the second till the ninth element and paste it outside on a separate adjustment layer like this. As all of these nodes stays here, we will not have any lag while we are animating the main video. Also, we have this first and last node as a reference, so it's more than enough to edit this animation. So for animating the camera, let's move our playhead to the very first frame and add a keyframe on translation x, y, z as well as on rotation x and z. The translation x value is going to be minus 0.1039, translation y is going to be 0.0147, translation c will be minus 3.08. After that, rotation x will be 13.7 and c will be 4.7. Now move the player to the 144th frame and change the translation x to minus 0.1492. y will be minus 0.6503 and c will be minus 2.73. Don't change the rotation x value, only change the rotation z value to minus 10. Now on the next frame, which is on frame number 145, add keyframes only on translation x and y. But in the case of rotation x, change the value to 30.7 and also add a keyframe on rotation z without changing any values. Now finally on frame number 280, bring the translation x, y and also rotation x, z value back to 0 and change the translation c to 3.21. With that, our camera animation is done. All that's left is to smoothen our curves. For that, open the spline window, zoom to fit by clicking on this option, select all these curves till the 144th frame, then deselect the final point of the yellow curve. Hit S to smoothen them, then hit T to bring in the ease in and ease out option and over here, change the ease in to 68 and ease out to 37. After that, select the curves from the 145 to 280th frame, then again hit S to smoothen them, then change the ease into 68 and ease out to 36. And with that, our camera animation is done and this is the preview. Along with the camera movement, the 10 elements are also having a small movement like this. And in order to create that, let's select the first merge node which controls the top 5 videos. Now on frame number 0, add a keyframe on translation X. And then move the playhead to the 86th frame, add keyframes on translation Y and Z and change the X value to 1.587. After that, move the playhead to the 355th frame and change the translation x to minus 0.323 and translation y to 0.017. Also, the translation c will be minus 0.52. After doing that, we will have our animation happening on our top 5 videos. Now, let's do the same with the bottom 5 videos. Select the second merge node which is connected to these nodes, move the playhead to the very first frame and add a keyframe on translation x. Then, move the playhead to the 86th frame and change the x value to minus 2.354 and after that, add a keyframe on translation y and z. Don't change any values over here because we are going to change it on our very final frame. So move the playhead to the very final frame which is 355th frame. 
And over here, transaction X will be minus 0.326, transaction Y will be minus 0.782, and transaction C will be minus 0.52. Now open the spline window and only enable these two most ready nodes. Over here, select the first two points of the red curve, hit S to smoothen them, and set the ease in and out to 33 and 47 respectively. After that, select the second and third point, and if you are having any trouble selecting the X curves, which is this red one, just go to the most ready nodes and open the collapse button to see them individually. Then disable the Y and C curves to only preview the X curves. Now make sure you have only selected these two curve points, hit S to smoothen them, then change the E sync to 25 and E out to 61. We don't have to change the Y and C curves, let it be as it is. After doing all of this, we will have a smooth animation like this. The animations are looking good at this point, now let's move to the final step. And that is to add this particle video as the background. And for that, add a merge node right after the render 3D and drag and drop a particle effect which will be there in the description. Then connect them all like this and change the operator in most 3D to under. After that, add a color corrected node and change the contrast to 0.42. And also go to the options and select this pre divide and post multiply option. Now select the particle video and click on this loop button. Also change the trim in value to 1. Now we need to use this vignette node to give it that dark borders and pull the focus to the center. So let's add it over here and increase the size to 0.855. Also change the anamorphism to 1.34 and then slightly decrease the softness to 0.472. And with that, our animation is ready. All that's left to do is to copy paste all these previous 8 nodes from the other adjustment layer and connect its image plane 3 nodes to the most ready like this. And if you want to add any new video files, just replace it with the media in nodes. And that's it. That's how you make a sunny video intro. I've also made a Danko motion graphics video which you can watch by clicking on the left hand side. I hope to see you there but for now, bye bye and take care.